All right, then. So the fifth president of East Africa's largest economy has a very, very full entry. Let's bring in Ken Geshinga. He's a chief economist at Mentoria Economics. He joins us on the line from Nairobi. Um, Ken, good to have you on the program. So from the perspective of economic policy, what did you make of Mr. Ruto's inaugural speech today? Well, many thanks for having me. Indeed, inauguration speeches tend to be very hopeful, very enthusiastic, and the president talked about reviving the economy and being able to create more jobs. Uh, that said, I was hoping to hear more about the tax policy because that's what Kenya badly needs. So he did speak about expanding the tax base. He came back to that theme several times. But how realistically can that happen? Because you already have a formal sector that's relatively narrow, relatively shallow, that's already very aggressively taxed. So where's the room to expand? You're absolutely spot on. If you're thinking around taxes like VAT, uh, there is no space to be able to expand. And that's the problem we have with Kenya's tax policy. We've actually never had a tax policy. And that means we've had a lot of regressive taxes being put on consumers. What we were hoping to hear is we need to, work, to move towards a more progressive tax policies. And there are opportunities of increasing revenue on areas such as land rates, which have been ignored in the past. But you can only get there when you have a, a fundamentally new tax policy that is able to move away from that regressive base towards a more progressive base. And isn't there also room, perhaps, you know, given the fact that we're in the middle of a crisis, right? So this does provide a strong opportunity here to simply say, well, let's say for argument's sake, we essentially chop the VAT rate, drop it down from maybe 16%, cut that in half, and then expand the number of goods that it applies to. You're absolutely spot on. Uh, and that's pretty much what had been uh, put on the table, uh, particularly during the campaign, that when you reduce the tax rate, you actually accommodate more people into uh, the tax bracket. Uh, we didn't hear much of that. Uh, the president, during the campaigns, had talked about uh, increasing efficiency on the VAT, said only about 45% of collectible VATs is collected. And he argued that if you increase that to 90%, you have an additional uh, bi amount of billions that you can spend. But, but did, now, that, did that percentage actually even stand up to scrutiny, though? Because, you know, when he says 45% of what's collectible is what is actually collected, did, did that number actually have any grounding in reality? Uh, it, the number kept being repeated, particularly during the town hall, uh, I'm not sure where that number came from, uh, possibly from uh, his research team, uh, but um, that was the argument that uh, he had been put forth, that it's just an efficiency issue. And uh, truth be told, there is some inefficiencies, there is some areas where we can improve efficiencies to collect revenue, uh, but it's not the additional revenue that will transform uh, the economy. So I think it's back to really thinking through about what's the tax policy that will power Kenya ahead, and I think that's what urgently needed. All right, then. So let's let's look at the spending side of his entry as well. Uh, in the 12 months to end June, government debt to suppliers was up 40 percent, just over 500 billion shillings. A figure that I see being thrown around now is around 600 billion shillings. You know, roughly f uh, about five billion dollars at current effects rates. How can that debt problem be resolved this year? Is it even possible to resolve it in the next six months? Well, if we don't have new ideas on how to create revenue and how to cut expenditure, which means Kenya needs a new fiscal policy, that didn't quite come clearly. And if we don't have that, then it means we'll continue running those budget deficits, which will necessarily mean more borrowing. So I've, I've always proposed that possibly we need to have a fiscal policy committee the way we have a monetary policy committee that really comes up with, on the ex revenue side, new tax policy, and on the expenditure side, really trying to see are there opportunities for government to divest from areas that are non-critical. And I think that's the thinking that will be really needed over the next six months. Okay, then. So the president also did speak about um, the question around driving down uh, the cost of credit, partly by moving the current credit reference uh, system away from just being a blanket um, blacklisting tool. But what needs to be changed in order to move to a true 
credit scoring system. The country has been talking about this for years now, but there's really been very little progress towards having a true credit scoring system in place. Well, I think there are two parts to your question around. First, number one, the cost of credit. What really makes the cost of credit expensive in Kenya is because of the high government borrowing that crowds out the private sector. So you have to figure out how do you reduce that government borrowing so that credit to the private sector come, can come down. But when you come to the credit scoring, the credit reference bureaus, um, these uh, tools tend to work in economies that are highly formalized. In Kenya, about 80% of your economy is in formal space. So entrepreneurs are getting money in very irregular patterns, money in and money out. And that's it's very difficult to model. So I think there could be some sense in terms of just putting it aside and formalizing those informal jobs, create formalizing them so that the normal credit scoring model can work. Otherwise, as it is right now, it's highly problematic and actually leads to a lot of people being denied credit. But, I mean, the, the net effect of that would just be essentially to stymie the flow of credit into the private sector, wouldn't it? Because if you're telling banks, look, we can't use the current credit scoring system, what they will see is, look, you're taking away a risk mitigation tool, so we're going to essentially be a lot more careful about how much credit we actually issue into the private sector. At a time when the government is willing to borrow five-year money, ten-year money at 13%, they have an incentive to not lend to the private sector. Well, I think the bigger incentive right now to not lend is because of the huge government borrowing. And until we deal with that, uh, that's not going to change. And that's what really President Mike Baki did when he came into office. He really reduced government borrowing and banks were falling over themselves to lend money to the private sector. So until we figure out how to reduce government borrowing, no matter what you do in the credit scoring space, banks will still uh, prefer to the low risk, low risk uh, government uh, entities. All right, one last question for you, Ken. So the president implied in his speech today that he will end uh, fuel and May subsidies that Kenya has been running for quite a few months now. But on the tax policy changes side, what would be on your wish list for the next six months? Uh, well, first of all, those subsidies, uh, Kenya is in the middle of an IMF program, a 38 month IMF program. and one of the requirements by the MF is to remove those subsidies on the fuel side by October. So next month, uh, those ones uh, must come out if you're going to continue with the IMF program. I think what I would like to see on the wish list is for the country to be able to develop a new tax policy that re uh, removes the regress regressive consumption taxes that have been, been burdened on Kenya and moves towards a more uh, progressive tax base. And for me, over the next six months, I really believe that is the opportunity that can unlock new revenue, reduce expenditures, and be able to drive. Now, the last two months, the Treasury has put together a new tax policy very late in the day, but it doesn't meet the standards that is required in economics. It just talks about uh, having a predictable tax base that doesn't change every five years. So it's it's a very underwhelming uh, tax policy, and we really hope the new team can be able to come up with uh, a, a new tax policy that really the people who should be able to who should be paying the taxes are the one uh, being able carrying most of the responsibility. All right, we'll leave it there for the time being. Ken Geshinga, chief economist at Mentoria Economics. Thank you.